Prime Minister Narendra Modi will be in Johannesburg, South Africa to attend the 15th BRICS Summit at the invitation of the President of the Republic of South Africa. It's the first in-person BRICS Summit since 2019. The summit will provide an opportunity to review progress of the initiatives launched by the grouping and identify future areas of activity. An expansion of the BRICS bloc, which is under consideration at the summit, has attracted several uh, members, potential candidates from Iran to Argentina. The Prime Minister will also participate in a special event, BRICS Africa Outreach and the BRICS Plus Dialogue. Uh, so that's what uh, is uh, going to be taking place now. Jo we're joined now at, uh, with a very special guest uh, uh, with us, Mr. Anil Suklal, is uh, the BRICS Sherpa. Thanks sir, very much uh, for being with us. Um, how significant, in your opinion, is this BRICS Summit? Well, thank you. Thank you for having me, Vishnu. Uh, this is a very significant BRIC summit. Uh, it marks the 15th anniversary of BRIC summit. But I think importantly, it's our first physical summit in four years since the pandemic. And it is significant also because it takes place in the post-COVID era and also within a highly polarized world. Uh, where we have major power contestation and also some of the key challenges that's confronting uh, humanity at the present time, like climate change, uh, food, fuel and energy uh, insecurity. So there are a number of uh, major issues that warrants our leaders coming together to see how collectively as leaders of the global south, uh, as BRICS leaders, they could address some of the key challenges and uh, uh, posit some positive responses to these challenges. Mr. Suklal, do you expect there to be a bilateral meeting between the Indian and Chinese leadership? Well, I've heard that there is talk of a bilateral meeting between the two leaders. And when do you expect that to take place? Well, uh, Prime Minister Modi is due to arrive in South Africa within the next hour. And he is here until Thursday evening. Uh, President Xi is already in South Africa. He's also here until Thursday evening. So this could materialize within the next two days. Um, I just wanted to know about the economic uh, or the economics of the, of the grouping itself. You've got countries like India, which have done very well economically, uh, China as well. And then we've seen Brazil and and South Africa perhaps fall off in terms of overall economic activity or growth. And Russia is in, in more than a spot of trouble with the Ukraine war. So is that a concern? Well, I think, uh, yes, there's uneven economic performance and growth amongst BRICS members. Uh, I think the economic environment in Asia is much more favorable than in Latin America and Africa. At the recent uh, spring meetings of the IMF World Bank, they noted that 70% uh, of global growth this year will come from Asia, largely due to the buoyancy being experienced by the Indian economy and to a lesser extent the Chinese economy and I think Asia itself. Uh, Africa, we are suffering still from the after effects of the pandemic. It's taking us a longer period to recover. And of course, the Russia-Ukraine situation has had an adverse effect. Uh, on the African continent, including South Africa, issues of energy security, food security, uh, the fertilizer crisis that our farmers are experiencing. Uh, we have also been impacted negatively by uh, the confidence of the international investors in our markets uh, as well. So I think a number of factors have combined to make it a bit more difficult uh, for our economic recovery to be on the same scale that Asia is experiencing. But we are confident, at least on the African continent, the environment is conducive uh, to reinvigorate growth. And I believe uh, BRICS working together, this is one of the agenda looking at accelerated growth for mutual benefit. That is a key focus of the agenda. Uh, presently at this moment, uh, since this morning, our uh, private sector is meeting in the BRICS Business Forum. Uh, Prime Minister Modi, together with uh, the other BRICS leaders, including uh, President Ramaphosa, are due to address the Business Forum this afternoon at 4 p.m. So I think uh, having 
the entire key uh, leading members of the private sector assembled in South Africa. Uh, this is a positive sign and could act as a stimulus in terms of further stimulating growth between our economies. Mr. Suklal, uh, that, I mean, despite that, um, how would you respond to those who say that, um, you know, in terms of geostrategic changes over the last couple of years, they've been profound and it affects the BRICS group. Let me be specific. India and China nearly went to war. Uh, India has got several uh, Western nations now as their partners. And in as much as Russia remains a partner, the fact is Russia is now uh, in a war with Ukraine. Different countries have various opinions about that as well. The Russian president, Vladimir Putin, couldn't even attend this BRICS summit. So in terms of um, international cohesion, of BRICS as, as a block, is that something which is now threatened? I don't think the cohesion of BRICS is threatened. On the contrary, I think despite these differences, and I think this is natural on the global front, when you have emerging powers uh, growing at the pace that India and China is growing at, they, they will be uh, from time to time confrontation. We're living in an age of conflict. And I think this is natural as countries uh, all seek to find the space on this new global uh, architecture that's emerging. Uh, you would find from time to time differences on, on issues, some of them. This does not impact on the cohesion of BRICS. The fact that we continue to, to meet and strengthen our partnership and this partnership continues to expand in various new areas. Uh, during our summit, we will also be exploring new areas of cooperation. There's an appetite because we recognize that as BRICS, we are major economies. We are engines of growth for the global economy and for the global south. And the fact that you have a large number of countries wanting to become part of the BRICS family demonstrate that there is a level of confidence in the, the leadership that BRICS has shown to the world community over the this past decade and a half. All right, Mr. Suklal, wonderful to, to hear from you and uh, very busy days for you in the days ahead. Thank you so much, sir, for being with us. Thank you very much indeed.